I want to join with my colleagues who have spoken so far on this bill, shortly entitled Smoking Designated Areas Bill 2023, and in particular lend support to the mover of the bill, our Prime Minister, and also Minister of Health, which is critically important, and also the member for Nevis um, 11 on the 10, sorry, on the other side. We have said that the legislation is short. In fact, it has only um, 12 different, more than 12, sorry, um, 16 different um, sections. And the bill was first introduced in this parliament about one month ago, so that this gave us, not only the parliamentarians here in this house, but also the citizens of St. Kitts and Nevis, an opportunity to pay close attention to this piece of legislation as it affects, of course, the health generally of people and collectively of our nation. It is true that the legislation smoking designated areas bill 2023 is part of a series of pieces of legislation that we have been introducing, especially as we deal with the matter of cannabis. But this really is generally, I would say, to protect the citizens of our nation. In fact, the specific purpose of the bill is to promote public health by, by reducing exposure to tobacco and other smoke in certain public places by designating certain specified public places as smoking areas and to prohibit smoking outside of a designated area in public places. If I were one, Madam Speaker, <laughs> that <laughs> was uh, an asthmatic, I would become very angry and concerned if someone pulled up close to me in public and started to puff and smoke coming into my face. And next thing, I undergo a serious asthmatic attack. My life is threatened. I have to run to the hospital, especially if I don't have my pump. And there, if the doctors and nurses are not responsive and medicines are not there, Douglas pass away. I don't want that to happen to anybody at all. Must not happen. At all. At all. <laughs> and that is why this piece of legislation is so important. It is to promote public health by reducing exposure to tobacco and other smoke, whatever smoke, whether it is from burning bush, whether it's from lighting your own house, whether it is smoking cannabis, any smoke, in certain public places must be prohibited. And we are designating specified areas in which, within which, that, however, is allowed by law. That is what this legislation is all about. And you see, smoking is a widespread habit that has been around for many, many centuries. 
and the health risk of second home smoke, we are told, are all well documented. In fact, a lot of people who develop um, cancer of the lungs, some of them would have said to the doctor, I never smoke in my life. How is this happening? But they would have been exposed to persons who were smoking and they would have inhaled, and that is what you call secondhand smoking, they would have inhaled the smoke and thus would have been affected in this way. And so in that vein, several countries now have enforced various types of legislation to prohibit smoking outside of the designated areas in public places. Well, I'm going to music festival. I'm going. And I will go to the place if I want to smoke that is designated for smoking. That is what is going to happen on Thursday, on Friday, on Saturday. If there are people who want to smoke during the music festival or wherever else, on whenever occasion, there will be a designated area for smoking. Ah. Ah. <laughs> ah. These are some of the issues which we have to work through. We have to make sure that the area that has been identified for designated smoking is such that it does not further expose person's health to any effect of smoking whatsoever. But we will try to make sure that we can put designated areas where people can smoke. We've sought very strong advice from the health authorities on this one. In fact, I make reference to section two of the legislation, interpretation. And in this act, it speaks to the chief medical officer. And the chief medical officer who has been appointed in accordance with the provisions of the Public Health Act, Chapter 9.21, has been involved, consulted, when we sought to bring this piece of legislation and to make it possible for designated areas for smoking be publicly known. It is not the government just getting up and doing things willy-nilly. It is being done after serious, serious consultation. We have used our important contact with public health persons to ensure that as we move the protection of our citizens to protect their welfare and their health forward in this progressive country, we have sought to consult with others to ensure that we are not in any way causing harm to people who may be, who may be exposed to smoking in these designated areas. And what we're now saying basically is that in section three of the bill, it says that smoking is prohibited in public places. Of course, if you're a farmer and you've grown um, cannabis, and you use it as well as part of your religious rites. Of course, 
You can smoke it, but it has to be within the confines of your home or in places which have been designated specifically for that kind of activity. And so section three makes it illegal, and we need to understand that. It makes it illegal for a person to smoke in a public place. The person contravenes subsection one, but he shall be allowed to retain possession of a smoking device. He has to be issued with a fixed penalty notice for $500 if there's violation. And if such a person finds himself as a defaulter of the payment of the fine, it is very possible that such a person might be forced by this law to undergo a certain number of hours of public community service. Or if there is further default of this, then the person might very well be liable to become imprisoned for five days. In other words, smoking in public places must be prohibited, is being prohibited. And persons who would violate this can be sanctioned in a particular way as outlined in the, in the um, legislation. Because you see, there are going to be, by this law, designated areas for smoking. So if there are designated smoke, uh, smoking areas and you choose to go outside of those areas and you go into the public, this law is saying you are violating this law and thus will have some problems with the authorities. Now what are these designated smoking areas? Section four of the legislation says, designated smoking areas are typically designated spaces within public areas where smokers can smoke, whether it's tobacco, whether it is cannabis, or other lawful substances without exposing non-smokers to health risks. And such public areas, as was referenced a moment ago by my colleague from Nevis, um, 11? 10, sorry. 11, 11. 10. 10, sorry. <laughs> such spaces are usually found in airports, in restaurants, in bars, and public parks. That is why I made reference earlier that at music festival, since we have designated to be this music festival to be a 24, or 420, sorry. <laughs> a 420 friendly music festival, there will be a place in that public area for designated smoking. I want to make it clear that proponents of designated smoking areas, they argue that they provide a solution 
that balances the needs of smokers and non-smokers. So my brothers who want to smoke, whether you are a Rastafarian or you are a tobacco chain smoker, no longer will we, by law, accept the puffing in the faces. It must be within designated public spaces specifically for smoking. I want to go on further and say that the World Health Organization has reported that even brief exposure to secondhand smoke can cause significant harm, including increased risk of heart disease, stroke, and of course, I mentioned earlier, lung cancer. It is important, therefore, that as we enjoy the habit of smoking, which we know can be deleterious to our health, we have to make sure that those whose system, whose constitution, whose health status is fragile, and can therefore be negatively affected by smoking, we must have respect for them and must therefore protect their health, even though we may be smokers and enjoy the puff and the pull on the cigarette or whatever it is we are smoking. In other words, we are saying you, as the move of the bill indicated earlier, you have a right to do what you wish for your body. But as you do as you wish for your body, as you do as you wish in service to your God, you have to make sure that we understand there are others out there who are sensitive to smoke and therefore have to be protected. That is, their health has to be protected as well. And so the, P, the legislation goes through in other sections that for you to be able to have a place designated and so forth, you have to make the necessary application for a license, and the license will be granted accordingly to the specifications of the law. It goes on in section five to speak about the renewal of the license once it would have expired. And it says here, a license with respect to a business is valid from the date of the first issue to the 31st day of December of the following year and is renewable every two years by the chief medical officer upon a new application made pursuant to section four and on payment of the prescribed fee on or before the 15th day of January. So if you want to have a designated area of your business for smoking, and you want to make sure that you will accommodate persons to smoke in that area, you have to have a license. And the license expires at the end of every year, 31st of December. And it is by law you have to go back through the process, apply for a new license, have it renewed, and then you can accommodate smokers again in specified areas according to law. And let me make it clear for those 
who are thinking of obtaining license. You can't have a license in your name, Mr. X, Y. And then you think you're going to just simply give it to Mr. A and B. The license is not transferable. It must be made absolutely clear. So a brother can't have a license to smoke in his place or in a designated area where you are worshiping and then it's in your name and then someone else come and go to another place and it goes into his, he, he takes it in your name and goes to another place and uses it. That's illegal. And that therefore is not going to be allowed by law. Every man who wants to have his own license must make his own application. It must be in his own name. The license is not transferable to a second party because that is a violation and that is going to bring, it is going to bring you problems. And so you can have as a result of practicing that which is legal, you may have your license suspended. It may be withdrawn, and it's not I saying it, it's what is said here in the bill. I want to read that section. Section seven of the bill, it says, license not transferable in six, and in seven it says, revocation or suspension of the license. The chief medical officer may revoke or suspend the license pursuant to this section if he or she is satisfied that the license, the licensee, sorry, has subsequent to being issued a license, one, provided false information or misrepresented any information contained, or otherwise used fraud or deceit in his or her application made pursuant to subsection one. If the person who holds the license fails to comply with the terms and conditions of the license, that license can be revoked and can be suspended. And so we must be aware of what this piece of legislation is saying. It says that, again, the license can be suspended or revoked if there is a breach of any of the provisions of the Act, which applies to the point where there is a revocation and a withdrawal. And if the person ceases to operate the licensed premises in St. Christopher Nevis for a period in excess of six months, then of course the license can be withdrawn because in other words, you have the license, you ain't using it. So bring it back. That is what the law is saying here, very clearly. If you ain't using it, bring it back. And so it can be taken from you. It is a revocation of the license granted because of course you're not using it. And it goes on throughout the bill, the law that we are passing today. It goes on in the various sections to deal with certain specific things that apply to the application of this license. In fact, it says here in section 12, in displaying the license and the signage as to how it is displayed. It says, section 12, a license shall clearly display a copy of the license on the premises. Like when you go into the lawyer's office, you see his big certificate there. Or you go into the lady who is doing her nails, she tells you there on a certificate that she has a business license to operate. The license that allows you to bring people to smoke in your area designated, it must be shown. In fact, the signage must contain the words, listen, designated smoking area in large and bold letters at least three inches in height. And the word smoking has proven health risk must also be displayed. Because remember that it is now fully scientifically determined 
that smoking is injurious to your health. So even though you have the right to smoke, you don't have the right to injure people's health. So even those who are smoking with you, you have an obligation to remind them, boy, even though I'm smoking with you, smoking is injurious to your health, you know? That is, that is what is being conveyed here. You have an obligation to ensure that you warn them that it has been proven by doctors scientifically that smoking is injurious to oneself and there is a constant reminder. It's like on the cigarette boxes. It says clearly now, smoking is injurious to your health. Smoking kills. But if you want to kill yourself, go ahead and smoke. That's what it says. Simple as that. My boy, that's what it says. <laughs> so, <laughs> So I believe it is important that we point out these things to our people. We are a government that is progressive. People have the right to smoke, but we have to protect others while you exercise your right to smoke. And there are specific responsibilities the offenses are outlined in this law. A person who contravenes section 14, it says a person who contravenes any provision of this act or any regulation made thereunder shall be issued with one, a fixed penalty notice for $1,000. In default of payment, shall be liable to perform up to 20 hours of community service, as I said earlier. And in default of your community service not being pursued, then you run real problems. You can have imprisonment for five days. We don't want to imprison anybody, but we want to protect people's health. And these penalties are therefore outlined to remind you constantly that we have to protect people's health. Madam Speaker, this is an excellent piece of legislation. Excellent. If I were the Attorney General, I couldn't have done a better job. Yes. <laughs> excellent piece of legislation. And so I want to join with my colleagues on this side, on the other side, and really give it my support and commend it to its final debate and its third reading and then coming into law. May it please you, Madam Speaker.